Well, hello, God bless you. I pray that you're having a wonderful day. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I am fired up and I'm excited a bit about being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, I've been born again. And uh, uh, I'm sanctified spiritually and God is sanctifying me practically every day. And I do have the, the Holy Spirit abiding on the inside and I'm excited about the things of God. Now, my friends, I tell you, I'm listen, listen, I'm more excited about being a Christian today than I've ever been because the world is getting darker each day and crazy things are going on. Now, I've just, I, I'm sure, I'm sure that you, uh, if you are a sorta of kind of sports fan, a maybe sports fan, a sometime not too often sports fan, you know, that this week LeBron James became the leading scorer uh, in basketball history, surpassing uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Forgive me for not being able to tell you exactly what the numbers uh, are. Gary would probably put them on the screen. Uh, 38,000 plus. So thank you, Gary. <laughs> 38,000 plus. Now, but for this preacher... The accomplishment, um, in and of itself, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I think he's a tremendous athlete. I, 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 I think he's a fine human being. And, uh, and he worked hard to get to where he is. But there are things that took place uh, around it that, that's, that I find to be just quite contradictory. And, um, uh, and uh, one of the things is... Uh, the speech that uh, LeBron gave after he broke the record. Now, uh, he, he thanked almost everybody. He thanked the Lake of Faithful. Um, he thanked uh, 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 Kareem. He, he, he thanked his beautiful wife and daughters. He has a beautiful family. Uh, two fine boys. His, his, his boys and his family. His, his mom and uh, and everybody uh, that, that's ever been a part of this run with me at least for the last 20, 20 plus years. He, I, I think it was just awesome to acknowledge all, all these people. He acknowledged the late great David Stern. He acknowledged the NBA um, and uh, and Adam Silver. Yes, he just he just went down the line acknowledging uh, everybody who's a part of the dream and so forth. He went on talking about the moment and thanking everyone that a kid from Akron would stand where he is and make NBA history downtown L.A., downtown Los Angeles. Just a, a phenomenal achievement. And, uh, and these are his words. Um and uh, he, he talked about uh, how, how great it is. And, um, and I think after he ran out of people to thank, um, then he drops the F-bomb uh, and, 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 and carries on. Now, now uh, I listen, I just think it's odd that in his list of people to thank, uh, that he didn't thank God. They didn't thank the main one who made it all possible. I know what you may be saying. Well, he's not a religious person. Well, that is that uh, that may be the case. Uh, uh, I, I do know uh, that that he believes in uh, praying. Now, I don't know who he believes in praying to, because you know when Demar Hamlin um, uh, passed out or died on the field, his heart stopped stopped beating. It seemed like everybody believed in God or prayer or someone. And people were posting their prayers, prayers to God, prayers. And then I find it interesting uh, that uh, LeBron, in his, he said, my thoughts and super prayers go up to the skies above for that kid's family. 
his prayers go up to the skies above. Well, who is that? What is that? The skies above. Now, the closest thing that I can come to uh, with, with that is uh, the Bible says uh, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4, it says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Speaks of the God of this world, who is Satan himself. And then Ephesians 2 and 2. I just want you to think about this. Ephesians 2 and 2 says, Wherein in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. I just find it a, a little striking that uh, prayers go up to the skies above. No mention of, of just, just, you know, casually thanking God. You know, most black folk, you know, you, you watch, the, watch some of these award shows. Uh, some of the rappers come up that drunk and uh, had just finished cussing. And they give on, and they thank their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who made this possible. Say, I, want, I just want to thank God. I mean, the man got a cigarette in his head, whatever. And he's thanking God. No mention of God here. And then juxtapose this with something that Nike did. And I thank God the response of people shows that there are people in America who notice these things and pay attention to them and who recognize them for the disrespectful, uh, disgraceful things that they are. Nike runs a commercial. I know who the guy is that uh, uh, made the commercial. I wouldn't dare uh, call his name. I'm not trying to send any traffic his way. But it sounds like church. And it sounds like someone preaching for Jesus Christ and talking about Jesus Christ and attributing the things that we attribute to Christ. They're attributing these things to a basketball player, to LeBron. I may be Gary right now speaking for LeBron because since LeBron uh, certainly didn't mention God himself and since LeBron prays to the skies above, LeBron may even be offended that someone would put that that even Nike would put a commercial out there sounding like the sanctified Holy Ghost feel tongue talking church and just with the church riffs and the preacher going forward and oh my it sounds just like church uh, all this to acknowledge the accomplishments of a man who didn't even thank God himself so I pray my friends that when you see these things and I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this. Let me restate what I'm going to say. Those who have a, a love for Jesus Christ and a heart toward God are moved when these things happen. Those who are able to be quite dismissive and say, oh, well, I don't think God cares about things like that at all. I don't think that God cares if you make a mockery of the church, you know, make a, a mockery of preaching. You use preaching riffs. You, you, you put together a production that sounds just like church. And by the way, it wasn't real. You put together a production that sounds just like church and take the things that people say about Jesus Christ and apply them to a basketball player. Uh, not a born again basketball player. If he's born again, uh, he's, I've never heard him say it. And you can't be born again in secret. Not a player who is known for promoting Jesus Christ, although he does many things good. I'm a, I'm a, I am a Christian and I defend the faith. I think that it is disgraceful. It was disgraceful of Nike to run a commercial featuring something like this. And for those believers who say, well, no big deal. It is evident to me that many of you just simply do not have a heart toward God. Had they did something disrespectful like that to your mama, you wouldn't be saying no big deal or to your dad or to you. You'd be all on Facebook uh, screaming, shouting, uh, defending yourself. Well, I want to say I want to thank God for the many out there who have already spoken to this and uh, for the act of sacrilege that it uh, is and was to run a commercial 
sounding like a a, a black church at that. And, uh, and, and hey, the guy, the guy could do it. And uh, got all of the riffs, all of the things, but attributing those things to a human being and a human being in particular on that night who did not even thank God himself. Well, he was caught up in the, in the, in the, in, in the moment and he was just so excited. He was overwhelmed. He can't think of everybody. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, you may not be able to think of everybody, but I, I would think that the, the, the main one who is responsible for it, uh, you, would, you would have thought of him. Because I'm telling you now, whether you're saved or not, uh, if, you, if you're blessed at all, the Lord is blessing you. And if the Lord decides to cut off those blessings, your blessings are, my friends, cut off. Now, I got to go up. I'm, I'm on to invite you invite you to church tonight, but uh, you know, the Grammys took place this week, and it was a, a mess, um, and uh, just, they reached new lows in terms of wickedness. Uh, Sam Smith, the homosexual singer, uh, did a, a, a number and he, I'm hoping that it was simulation. Gary, I'm hoping it was simulation. I'm, I'm hoping that it was simulation of him being urinated on by a bunch of men. Now, who finds that entertaining? Who finds that entertaining? And the Grammys now are praising some transgenders who have been the first to win a Grammy. This world is messed up. Uh, some guy who thinks he's a girl. Uh, is being praised and given a Grammy, and I guess that creates a new category. And um, uh, even even Beyonce, uh, in her speech, she wanted she thanked God for protecting her, and I thank God that she did thank God. I hope she was talking to the, about the God of the Bible, but it's very difficult when you're talking about the God of the Bible. Then you want to turn around and say, and I thank I am thankful to the queer community. Um, and, and said, God bless you and thank you so much. Now, the God of the Bible calls the queer lifestyle abomination, an abomination. And the Bible has not changed. And I want to say to you, my friends, it's still an abomination. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not being mean. I'm being the voice, uh, a voice, a voice for God and a voice for God's truth. And as this culture tries to change our minds and push us in a corner and to get us to where we're not paying attention to things and to just slip things in, to come in unaware, to slip in, there are those of us whom God have called to sound, sound the alarm and to declare these things are not right and to point them out to you. All I want you to do is think about it. Before you dismiss me, call me wrong. I haven't misquoted anyone. I didn't, I didn't read the scriptures incorrectly. Um, I have not taken the Bible out of context. What I am saying is true. You cannot be giving thanks to the God of the Bible and in the same speech, give thanks and praise and God's blessings to a lifestyle that the God of the Bible called an abomination. And I think that when these things take place, that we should, in a loving way, because we want to see everybody saved, point these things out because, my friends, for us to say nothing is for evil to progress. Gary, I'm out of time. I was going to, I was going to just uh, uh, touch on Joy Reid of MSNBC and how excited she was about what took place at the Grammys. And, and Reid says, this means that the rights, to this is the total defeat of the right in the culture wars, that because the Grammys had a satanic theme.
because the Grammys had a wicked, godless, satanic theme that this is the sign that uh, uh, the cultural wars are over. America has been uh, uh, defeated. The right is destroyed, which by the way, if Joy Reid is right, then all, all, all of uh, you Christians out there, born again Christians, black or white, black or white, that means you're defeated also because the true Christian is not excited about uh, transgender uh, uh, artists getting anything. We don't care about that. We, we are not, uh, uh, we don't view the cultural wars as, be, as, as being over. We're not going to stop declaring God's truth. And one of these days, I will say this to Joy Reid and to the rest of you. One of these days, we're going to give it to you. You'll be able to have it. Gary, we're going to be caught up in the rapture. We're going home. Jesus is going to come. And when he comes, you can have it all. Matter of fact, you can come and have this desk where the man has been sitting, telling you the truth and inviting you to church. I'm going to be caught up in the rapture and I'm going to be with Jesus. Or he's going to call me home before that time. And whatever the Lord decides to do, as long as I'm with Jesus, it will be all right with me. So my friends, I'm saying all of this to invite you to join me tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I'm going to be teaching the Word of God to you, and you're going to be blessed by the Word of God. Either meet me on this medium, and if it's possible, come to the live services. People often tell me, wouldn't I, I see you on, on uh, YouTube television and on various streamings, on various uh, uh, mediums. But it's, there's, there's nothing like being here live, and I, 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 I concur. So join me tonight if you can. If not, join me on this medium for Bible study. <laughs> you got it. Bible study. Tonight, we're going to walk in the word of the Lord together, and I declare to you, the Bible is all we need. Hallelujah. If we go by God's words, God's precepts, God's statutes, God's judgments, God's law, God's gospel, the revelations of God, the things that are laid out in the scripture, we will love life and see good days. And then we'll end up over there where the wicked will cease from troubling and our souls will get rest. See you tonight, right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ.